Hey everyone, Sire here. I finally finished my five cards for Scrapping for Less's March 2020 card kit. A um, lot of fun working on it. I was a little delayed because of just events that are happening right now um, and just took it. It took up all my time. But I finally got my five cards done and without wasting too much time, let's start getting into card number one. For the first card, I am using collection number one, which came with a bunch of spring-inspired ephemera. Um, there were some bunnies and a lot of flowers, so I decided to sift through them and just pick the ones that can create a nice, simple card. Uh, the purple pattern paper there is from the collection, and I just used a rectangular die. I matted it on that gray cardstock that came in the kit, and then matted that onto a piece of purple cardstock that also was in the kit. So I'm playing around with the ephemera, just trying to see how I want this um, display to look. For the sentiment, I did pick up um, thinking of you, and it was because I was looking for a simple saying that was um, just a single line. I didn't want a, uh, a stacked saying. And I did, I am going to heat emboss this with some clear heat, or uh, clear embossing powder and just to give it a little bit more shine. Um, so just playing around. <clears throat> I, I do like playing around with the ephemera pack. Um, you can just create some nice little scenes. Mine is definitely a little more on the basic side, but that's what I love about it. You can go as simple or complex as you want. In this case, I just wanted it to have a bunny that was kind of hiding around some flowers, peeking up. This was actually going to be my Mother's Day card um, this year, but I decided to pick a different one, and you'll see it eventually in this video. Uh, but this one's not bad. I liked it. I like the color combination, and um, yeah, I just I just like to play with those ephemera. I think they, she does a good or Teresa does a good job of creating these um, for. Gluing it down, I decided to use a scrapbooking tape um, just because when I heat embossed it, it did warp the card stock. So I, 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 when, I, when I do heat embossing, I, I tend to use the tape just because it's more sturdy. It's more, um, it won't warp. And then I glue that into my card base. And to finish off, I'm taking some of these really awesome pink matte enamel dots. And then I'm going to add some of the sequins. One thing I did notice about those enamel dots, even though they are absolutely awesome, um, they don't seem to be as sticky as the other ones. Um, at least for me, I've had it on numerous cards where they kind of fell off. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And I had to apply glue to them. Once you apply glue, then it was fine. Um, I just noticed that these ones were like that. So I just coated a bunch of sequins on it just to fill in the spots. And that's it for card number one. For card number two, I decided to take that circular stamp. This is from collection number two. And I'm just going to take some memento ink. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am going to use my alcohol markers to color this one in. And of course, the misty is always helpful with something very detailed like this so that I can stamp it multiple times without it um, without it uh, making double ink lines, I guess you can say. <clears throat> you, can, you can ignore the butterflies on the left side. I was going to add some, but later on I decided not to do it. The markers that I'm using are Nouveau markers. I got them for Black Friday last year just to try them out. And they, they're okay, they, they work. Um, I think I do like the Copics better, but these aren't too bad. And I did color them in different shades of pink, and then the glass I colored with one shade of very light blue. And then I'm just gonna fill in the rest of it. Normally I don't show my coloring, um, but because we're a good time with only 28 minutes as I have so far, um, I figured I could just leave it in just to fill in the time or show you what I how I do it. Nothing fancy, it's um, very basic, just usually one or two, or two to three color shading. 
This stamp was a little bit harder to do just because the, the ink was very thick. So it was hard to see where the leaves and the flowers were. So actually, I probably colored some of the flowers as leaves, but it's okay. Um, that's why you can see me coming back with my pink, pink markers to fill in the rest. I will use uh, a stitch die from Lawn Fawn to cut that out. It's a double stitch one, so it's inside out one. So once that's cut out, I'm going to color in the inside with a Spectrum Noir gray marker. And this is just BG1. Um, this just gives it so there's not so much white, but not being taken away from the vase and flowers itself. Um, it's just, it's a nice subtle color. Oh, there goes my hair. <laughs> my head. <laughs> and I did add... Um, some shading in the bottom just to give it um, a little dimension on the so it looks like it's on a table or something. The next thing I'm going to do was I was thinking about matting it um, but I'm going to take a marker instead and this is just another way of doing it. Um, I just followed the stitch line and colored it with the exact same pink marker that is with the flowers and this will kind of give it the effect that it is a matte so it, it will separate from the white of the card. <clears throat> and you can do that with any color that you're working with and it, it's, it's a very quick and easy way. So this is a beautiful piece of paper but it was too big and what I decided to do was cut it all out. I'm going to fast forward this so you don't see it all but I pretty much cut out all the pink flowers, the bows and um, Yeah, there we go. So you see the pile there, and I'm just finishing up with this one. I didn't actually use that one, and I, I saved it for later because I absolutely love that butterfly and that that flower. So it won't be on this card, but I did save it. And so what I did was I took one of the pattern papers that kind of match um, the color scheme of these flowers, and I'm going to die cut that. But first, I'm going to create a sentiment. Um, and this one is another thinking of you. And it's a two part. You have the banner, and then you can just line up that sentiment that's also in the pack and just stamp it right in the center there. It is very tight, so you don't have much wiggle room at all. Um, but it it looks nice when you when you get it centered just perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece of card pattern paper and I'm going to trim it down to an A2 size so that's going to cover the whole card. And then I took another piece of just white cardstock, and that is the part that I'm going to put the whole flower back onto. And I'm just seeing which matte would look good, if it's going to be a gray or if I'm going to use the pink. And at first I did use the pink cardstock, as you can see right here, but I realized that that pink was just too different than the flowers. So I went back with the gray. That gray that came in this card, kit I used it all up it is such an awesome color um, for this this card kit um, I wish I had two sheets of it in this case um, there's always, that always seems to be the case in, in these case in these kits that there's always that one color that just seems to work so much better and you just kind of wish you had two so anyways I did stick with the gray and I put that white piece into the center there and then I wrapped um, a piece of this um, ribbon that came in the kit I'm moving really fast, but what you'll see is I'm going to fold it on the other side of the card. And using double side tape, I'm going to pin it down. But what I do next is once that's aligned, I'm actually going to fold it back again um, and tape it again. And it's I wanted to kind of mimic the effect of that sentiment. So there we go. I'm going to put the tape back down. And then I'm going to fold it back over again. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the base card will also get a piece of ribbon. So it's it's similar to that banner where it's a folding ribbon on the front and the back, and it kind of looks like it's a double layer. Now I'm just positioning the, the flowers that I had cut all up, and just to go around that circle, sentiment, circle um, piece I created. I did cut out some of the leaves, and I stuck them just around the area. So that's what I'm going to work with, and now I just need to slowly, or carefully, not slowly, but carefully add those back in without losing too much placement. Um, 
it is a little hard. I always forget where I had everything, so I will have to, what I learned, and this is a good tip, is when you're gluing it with liquid glue, don't press down too tightly. Just kind of set it softly on the paper, because then you can maneuver. Once you press down, it's, it's harder to maneuver things around, and then you start ripping the paper. So that's my tip for this video. <laughs> that's definitely what I learned. Using some foam tape, I did prop up that, um, that stamp section, and then I'm just gonna put those leaves back into place that I had them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, once it's all set in place, I'm going to glue it to the back of the um, pattern paper. But I don't remember why, but I, I ended up using double-sided tape instead of gluing it. I think, no, don't remember why. But that's what I did. <laughs> and then, uh, so I'm just going to glue that to the paper, um, the pattern paper. Now that that is on, I can wrap my ribbon around this one to keep it secure. And I will use the double sided tape to make sure that it will not go undid, undone, undone. I did get off camera here, but what I'm doing is I'm putting that bow back onto the card and I'm going to use some foam tape on the ribbon part and then the bow part will be glued on. And that's just because the center circle piece is lifted and to keep everything flush, um, I do need to use the foam tape at the tips. And I should move that up soon so you can see, there we go. So it's, not, it's looking pretty nice, I really like that. I did use the same pink marker as I did for the trim of the circle and I went around the banner just so it wasn't all white. And then I'm going to use that gray marker again and just shade in where the folds are just to create a shadow. Very, very subtle. And I'm going to just use some normal glue to glue in center. But first, what I'm trying to do is just gonna put a little piece in the center there so that it's all level, so it doesn't dip in the center. Not needed, it was pretty skinny, and that's a very small piece, but um, it's good practice not to forget to do that. So I'm just adding some glue and then adding a little more of that tape just to secure that ribbon into place. And then to finish this off, I am just going to add some of these stickles. It's, I believe it's called Stardust. And I'm just going to go to all the flowers and the bow and so all over the place, just loading it with nice shiny glitter. And then I'm going to take some of these gray um, enamel dots. Once again, these are amazing. They're matte and I, I just love them. I, I can't say how much more I love them. <laughs> They're just so awesome. Um, just totally different than the, the shiny ones. And I just add three to the top there. And that's it for this card. It's really sharp, shiny. Um, it's just full. And this is the card I gave my mom for Mother's Day. For card number three, I'm going to start off using some distressed ink. And this is Shabby Shutter, I believe. Um, and I'm just starting off with a very light color. This card is inspired um, to be very simple and when I opened up the collection for this kit I knew exactly what I wanted to try to do and it's very simple and I absolutely just love the simplicity of it. Um, I will say that there is room for improvement but I'm definitely happy with the overall. And so right now I'm just taking the sentiment follow your dreams and the reason I chose that one is because there is a butterfly in this kit and I wanted to use that butterfly with its little trail. But what I know, what you notice there is, <laughs> thumbs up, I didn't stamp it fully so I took the stamp on the, just the color, um, just the very end of it so it wasn't the whole thing. Uh, so I could re-stamp it and position it properly. Um, if you didn't catch that, that's what happened. I am heat embossing this again with some clear embossing powder and just cleaning this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these buttons and I'm going to use them as if they were flowers in a field. So now you can understand why I put that light green in the in the back. I did use a stitch die um, and then I decided if I wanted to matte it onto the color but to keep it very simple I'm just going to take that stitch die and just put it right onto the base. So it's white on white almost, other than the green on the bottom. And it's just a very clean, simple design. So what I have is those, um, uh, what are they called, uh, uh, glue dots. 
And then I can use those. They're amazing for buttons and such. And um, so I'm going to glue those on, and they're going to be the flowers in the field. And so I have four of them. And in this case, the button was a little bit smaller, so I just cut that dot in, in half. And then I'm taking uh, a, pel a pen, a gel pen, and drying some stems and, flat and leaves. If I had a really fine doodle marker, that would have been amazing. Um, but I don't have one, so my gel pen um, was all I had. But it just doesn't create such a clean line. But you can kind of see what I was trying to go for is just a little doodle. Then I added the butterfly with a little trail, and that's the following your dreams. Going back over the stem and the leaf just to create a darker outline so it's not so hidden, it's not so um, transparent on the grass. Then what I do is I'm going to take some of those blue enamel dots and I'm going to add them as if they were more flowers in a field, some nice blue ones. Then I take the ink again and I realize it just wasn't dark enough so I want to start just using a finger dauber and just adding more color, just kind of creating um, layers of color. And that one corner is a little bit too dark. Um, you can kind of see where I, I made a trail, but you know, it, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It, I will move on. It's, it's okay. I like it. Then I'm going to get back into those alcohol markers, but this time I have some, I can't pronounce it, but they are Copic markers. It's this, the Chao ones, Chao ones. And I'm just going to color in, trying to f mimic the enamel dots and the button colors and just fill it in. That butterfly is very thick lines, so you can't really see it from afar, but if you look up closely, you can see the blues, pinks, and such. And that's that card. Very simple. I absolutely love it. For card number four, I am following um, the card sketch that came with the kit. Um, you can go to Scrapping for Less and get their download section and you can find what sketches they provide for each kit. And this one was um, my favorite thing sketch. So I am following it fairly closely with the border that is used from Doodlebug's lace borders. And then the pattern paper is from the collection four and then the green, the mint green is from the card kit. I cut another circle using the um, Lawn Fawn circle stitch die. And what I'm trying to do is try to mimic that same idea where I used an alcohol marker to color around the edge. So I was trying those three different colors, um, but none of them seemed to match the card pa or the paper very well. And then I tried looking at that um, vellum just to try something, but I never did end up using it. Not in these cards. For the sentiment, I decided to use the Grow Laughter. Um, not a big fan of that sentiment. I really don't know what it means, but I just like the idea of growing laughter. So it's, it's like um, you're trying to make your friends laugh with your silliness. Um, so that's why I chose it. It really doesn't have much more than any other meaning than that for, to me. But I'll, send, I'll, I'll use um, the VersaFine ink and put that right in the center there. And then what I do is I take some vintage photo and I'll just add it to the trim of the whole circle. And the reason, as you can see, is that circle gets lost very easily. So just by adding that, you can see um, where the circle actually is very clearly. And it just gives a little bit of definition. These are actually strips that I got from Love from Lizzie. Absolutely love them. I'm not sure what you call these ones. They're white with a gold trim. And I'm just going to wrap that around the back of the card so that it won't lift. If you glue them to the back, then you map that to your card, it will never lift. So that's um, what I do with those. And I just really love those um, peel-off stickers. Recommend them to get them if you do. The next thing I do is I take those flowers that came into the collection for, and I'm taking that little pearl in the center, and I'm going to take some of that yellow ink, um, mustard seed and I'm just going to dab in the center and then add one of those enamel dots to the center and I did that to four of them. Um, I kind of wish I did five but um, it didn't seem right at the time until I started editing the video that the five would have been better. 
And I'm just using those glue dots again to make sure that they stick to this card very well. Just be very careful working with these um, paper flowers because if you put them on glue dots, they can they can tear pretty easily because they are just paper. Very, very nice, but they are very um, fine paper. So I did try with the fifth flower, but I didn't do it. Um, I just tried to maneuver all the four, the four flowers around, and then I just put that fifth one away. It's just a nice little yellowness to the card. And those enamel dots, like I said earlier, the, these ones seem to not stick very well. I know I was playing around with them a lot, but actually this happens a lot with even cards I don't play around with. Then to finish off, I did add some Nouveau Drops. This is Mint Metallic. And then matte out the card, and that's it. I should have done this before putting those Nouveau Drops on. I always forget. Um, but just be careful when you put it down and everything's good. So that is card number four. Now for card number five, we will move through this very fast, just like all the other ones. But I will say this one was the most problematic one of all the cards. Because um, it was getting really hot in my apartment, and I turned the fan on, and you will see what happens. Um, I won't need to say any more. <laughs> You'll just see. But anyways, I'll start using the stencil, and I'm just going to... Um, Use um, Broken China, Squeeze Lemon Aid, and Sponge Sugar, and just put it all over the, the paper. Um, these colors look really nice together, especially when they start overlapping each other. You just get these beautiful greens and purples, um, really nice, and oranges, slightly. Um, really beautiful colors when you mix these together. Um, and I think it looked really nice with this butterfly dye that came in the card. Uh, I believe this was the banana split that this butterfly came with. It's just really nice, very spring. Just love that, it's so beautiful. And so just cleaning this all up. And then I cut down that card to be an A2 size. Now I'm just choosing the colors that I want. Um, I am thinking about matting it. Um, and just playing around with the green, the, the gray, and the pink, just seeing which one I like the best. So what I end up doing, and see my card dancing around, you can see the fans on. So what I ended up doing was I will take the pink and the gray, um, and I'm going to mat them. I want the gray to be a pretty big border. I think it's a quarter of an inch of a border, and then I want almost a sixteenth of an inch of the pink. Very small, just enough to separate it but I really like that pink and gray combination with these butterflies. And I'm gonna glue that down to the base of the card. Okay, then what I did was in the card, uh, the banana split came with this arrow die. I cut it out with the three colors, the green, the pink, and the gray. And I'm just trying to position how I want it. I thought it would look kind of neat with them crisscrossed on the bottom and stuff, but it just wasn't working for me. So I decided to move on to adding the stamp. And the first one I decided to try to use, I think it said was springtime, but it was too small and um, too fine, I guess I could say, or it just, you couldn't read it. So I went through all this hassle and as you can see, a whole that embossing powder is blowing everywhere. And um, so that was a mess. Then I heat embossed that that message or that sentiment and only to find out that I couldn't read it. So I go back and I take the thinking of you stand <laughs> there. Um, at one point I do eventually move the fan away. But I get to the thinking of you back from collection one and I, I use that one instead. So I'm just going to use some of that um, anti-static powder, start over again but using the thinking of you. This time no fan is on but what happens? I miss the I missed the cup. So it, all again, it spills everywhere and I <laughs> had to clean it all up again. This this card was just, there's always that one card that causes problems. Um, just funny how that happens. Eh? And it's kind of like that saying, uh, when it rains it pours. So 
I did heat and bust that and I'm just going to create some fishtails at the end and then what I'll do is I'll also add some padding to both sides because the card is matted on two layers I need to lift it up so it's not sagging on both ends so I will add the mat but I won't show you I'll just kind of skip through all that and you can see the mess that I left <laughs> to, to prove that I did that so I'm going to glue that down into and then I'm going to play with uh, those um, arrows again but it just I think that it just wasn't working for being on the bottom um, so what I end up doing is I get the idea of putting it more uh, vertically on the card and that's when I realized that it looked better that way just playing I do this a lot I will play with and play with it sometimes this is why it takes me so long to make cards but I kind of just want to leave it in here because I, I did fast forward it quite a bit to show you. So there we go. That caught my eye right away immediately when I did that. So I'm just going to lift up that sentiment and I'm just going to stick one of them underneath. Um, just for something different. And then I'll glue the other one on top of, uh, on top of the sentiment facing upwards. If you haven't noticed yet, it's very slight detail but you'll notice that I actually glued the whole thing upside down um, so that was the final ugh, moment making this card it wasn't until I started taking pictures that I realized that this card actually was glued upside down and I had to remove the whole thing and um, I actually ripped the card so I had to do a little paper surgery to kind of make it look good again for the photos because I forgot to take a photo uh, the final photo before dismantling it um, and and you'll know what I why when you see the and you'll see that I put the card at the bottom so you can't see the whole card and that's just because I was hiding my uh, surgery job on the card but anyways I just took some of the sequences from both packs and just stuck them all over this card to kind of match the the ink that we used so that was it now to show you all the cards in real time um, I really like this kit. This one was a lot of fun. Very uh, spring inspired. Awesome colors. And I really loved those enamel dots. I really loved this one. Um, I liked how I was able to cut down that whole paper and still make a nice bouquet um, that wrapped it. And this one with the very simplistic card, I just love trying different techniques, different um, styles. Um, and this one, of course, is different in the way that I decided to follow a card sketch. And then, of course, the final one. I won't show you the bottom. <laughs> I'm very strategic about that. And uh, all just really amazing cards. Well, I hope you enjoy yourself. Um, I hope you have got some inspiration from this. Um, I had a lot of fun working with it lots of fun elements in it and I know I can make a lot more fun cards with this kit. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.